Well, good morning, everyone. My name is Les Kovacs, and I'd like to welcome you to St. Aidan's Anglican Church worship service this morning. Today, our sermon will be brought to you by the Reverend Kim Salo. He will continue in our sermon series of the gifts of the Holy Spirit, today focusing on the gift of unity. Our intercessor will be the Reverend Susan Salo, and our music will be led by Sarah Jane Beaudry and Ashley Hall. There is one announcement that I would like to make this morning. We will be holding two online events via Zoom during the week of May 31st to June 7th. The theme of the week will be God's story, our story. The first event will be held on Wednesday, June 5th at seven o'clock, and it will be titled God's story, our story, our songs. This event will feature various musicians who will present their songs, after which we will gather on Zoom to discuss the meaningfulness of those songs. The second event will be called God's Story, Our Story, John's Story, and it will be held on Friday, June 7th at 7 p.m. This event will consist of a guest speaker sharing their testimony after which, again, we will meet via Zoom to speak with him and to discuss any topics that may have touched our hearts. The purpose of these events is to gather together as a community, to invite our friends, and to tell God's story through our stories. And speaking of Zoom, don't forget that after our service this morning, we will be getting together via Zoom to meet for coffee and fellowship. So now, dear friends, as we humbly come before the Lord, let us pray. Almighty God, as we prepare to worship you today, we ask that you would stretch our imaginations to sense the majesty and mystery of your ascension. Help us understand how Jesus' presence in heaven can give us confidence in our prayers and a real hope for the future. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, Amen. And now our call to worship. Jesus ascended in triumph to his heavenly throne. There he hears our prayers, pleads our cause before the Father, and rules the world. Blessed are all who take refuge in him. Come, let us worship and bow down. Amen. Our first song this morning, led by Sarah Jane and Ashley, is No Longer Slaves. You
Thank you very much. That was lovely. And now for our scripture, scripture sentence, taken from Matthew 26, verses 19 to 20. Go make disciples of all nations, says the Lord. I am with you always to the close of the age. And now please join with me in reading the collect of the day. Almighty God, your son Jesus Christ ascended to the throne of heaven that he might rule over all things as Lord. Keep the church in the unity of the spirit and in the bond of his peace and bring the whole of creation to worship at his feet who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now we'll have our first reading by the Reverend Kim Salo. Good morning. I'm Reverend Kim Salo. I'm here with the reading and the sermon. Today's reading is from Paul's letter to the Ephesians, chapter 4, verses 1 to 6. As a prisoner for the Lord, then, I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to one hope when you were called. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. So let's pray for a moment. Lord God, thank you for uh, what you are doing for your church through this uh, time when we're not able to, to gather as usual. We pray blessing upon all the people of your church, Lord. And uh, we pray that even though we have been apart a lot, pray that in you we would have unity. Amen. So I thought I'd share a joke. I heard someone clever managed to put together the pandemic, COVID-19, and the ascension. I thought, okay, well, I have to try this because this is ascension. So of course, uh, after Jesus' death, he was raised from the dead. He appeared to his followers for 40 days. And on the 40th day, he ascended into heaven. So we celebrate that. And so he went back to heaven and then sent his Holy Spirit at Pentecost to be with us forever. So here, here's the punchline. Jesus is working from home. Oh, I know, I know. Someone had to do this. Someone had to do it. So my message uh, is, is neatly wrapped up in, in a few words. There is only one church. It's a simple thing to say, and the Bible says it clearly enough, but when we look around today, can we really say there is only one church? In the towns where Susan and I ministered in Manitoba and Saskatchewan, there are various churches, Alliance, Anglican, Baptist, Lutheran, Mennonite, Orthodox, Pentecostal, Presbyterian, Roman Catholic, and United, to name the most common on the prairies. It certainly doesn't look like one local church, either in theory or in practice. I did enjoy being in various ministerials in those towns where pastors got along for the most part. But at no point would we have said together, we are one local church. But if I had been paying better attention, to what the Lord was actually doing in some of those places, I would have said many times over, there is only one local church. The fact is, I have experienced the gift of unity in and among various churches by the power of the Holy Spirit 
at various times, and I want to tell you briefly about a few of those experiences of unity, of oneness in the church. The first was an event at Birds Hill Park on the same site uh, as the Folk Festival, obviously not at the same time. The event was called Jesus 79. In 1979, I was 25. I had been a Christian for two years and a member here at St. Aidan's for a little less than that. I had, by then, been baptized in the Holy Spirit along with Susan. Jesus 79 was an enormous three-day charismatic Christian event in which all the gifts of the Holy Spirit were present. The crowd of thousands at Birds Hill Park were mainly Roman Catholics, Anglicans, and Pentecostals, but with many, many others, including, and I always enjoy seeing, uh, remembering seeing them, the charismatic Baptists, Mennonites, and Lutherans. For the big single gatherings at Jesus 79, I was up on the stage, near the back, behind the musicians and speakers. I had been asked to be a prophet among the other members of the Word Gift Unit, each of us from, well, from a wide variety of congregations, but we worked together uh, using the gifts. By the way, um, the, the other thing I remember is that there's one, there's one good thing about being a, a new Christian. You don't have any old church habits, so you just go ahead and do stuff for the Lord. So there I was, a two-year-old Christian, among the prophets at a massive charismatic gathering. It was a lot of fun. Now, to detail this, the job of the Word Gift Unit was to pray together and to offer any word from the Lord that we heard. And if one of us was given a prophecy or other word for the crowd, it was given to the leaders to discern, and then that word was given to the assembly by us. At Jesus 79, Denominational groups also had their own breakout groups. I remember the tiny group of charismatic Lutherans, for instance, but kept coming back together for the main celebration. So that weekend, 40 years ago and more, the Holy Spirit unified his church. And we also see that same gift of unity at Jesus 79 among the charismaniacs in Winnipeg, both before and after that. My next three examples of unity come from my parish in Verdon, Manitoba, where I was rector for nine years. One experience was Alpha, that's right, Alpha, which the Anglicans led in Verdon, running 10 Alpha programs in a row. Anglicans were always in the leadership, but the leadership and, and the, the people who came stretched across every denominational line. Incidentally, uh, in the present, doing a Alpha uh, here at St. Aidan's, except for doing it online, is, is like old home week for Susan and I. Back then, uh, for Verdon, God's vision for, was for a wider community Alpha. So by the time we were done, there had been hundreds of people from a hundred miles around whose church backgrounds span the entire spectrum, or none at all, including some from churches that taught exactly nothing about the Holy Spirit. So we experienced those at that period the gift of unity through Alpha. Another example in Verdon was a town prayer walk organized by many of the same people plus others. Suffice it to say that the best sign of unity was a pair of pastors on the prayer walk. One was a Pentecostal pastor, six foot tall and thin and wearing his Sunday suit and beside him was the Roman Catholic priest about my height but chubbier in his black cassock and carrying a large gilt cross. So as a couple of prayer partners that day, they walked and they prayed around the town along with maybe 60 or so others from every church in Verdon. So another moment uh, where we experienced the gift of unity. 
Also in Verdun, we read the entire Bible through in public. The Bible Society provided the outline. Believers from many churches did this in an empty storefront on the main street with loudspeakers on the sidewalk, coffee inside, and readers around the clock. And so we gathered around God's word in unity and proclaimed it. It was great fun. So with all this going on, when did the penny drop so that I understood that there is only one local church? Well, years later, Susan and I were on a study leave at Briarcrest Seminary in Saskatchewan doing a course on Paul's pastoral epistles. In other words, First and Second Timothy, uh, First and Second Thessalonians, and, and Titus. The teacher that week was Carl Hinderager, who combines being a Montana rancher, a Baptist, and a PhD in New Testament. And he said something during that course that struck me as unusual. But it really shouldn't have. He said, no matter what town you are in, there is only one church. Of course, the whole class looked at him funny, but the logic of Carl's statement is impeccable. And considering my experiences, all it should have sunk in years ago. So it's right here in Scripture, the Scripture we read uh, from chapter 4 in Ephesians, where Paul writes, There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to one hope, when you were called, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all who is over all and through all and in all. Now in those experiences I described, none of us created this unity, this oneness, because God has already created it. God made only one church. In those experiences and lots of others, we were simply taking part in the gift of unity in the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit was manifested, revealing the unity we already have in the one Lord. One body, one spirit, one hope, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all. And here, Paul is practically giving us the heart of the creeds, in which we say we believe in one God and in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. So why isn't this gift of unity manifested more often? With all the official ecumenical efforts of the past century, you would expect more. But it seems that churches are nearly as fractured as ever. Suffice it to say that when we experience God's gift of unity, it is the work of the Holy Spirit. The last time I looked, there are over 34,000 Christian denominations in the world. No wonder that Jesus prayed at the Last Supper in John 17 that they all may be one. I've often been asked, why are there so many churches? Division in the church is almost as old as the church. So, for instance, when Paul told the church at Corinth how to behave at the Lord's Supper, he started out by saying, I hear that when you come together as a church, there are divisions among you, and to some extent I believe it. No doubt there have to be divisions among you to show which of you have God's approval. And right after he, uh, Paul said that in uh, chapter 11 in 1 Corinthians, Paul goes right on from there to talk about the many gifts and the one spirit 
and that there are many parts but one body. So that's one of the main teachings from 1 Corinthians 12, 13, and 14 that we right here at St. Aidan's have been working at these last few months. So unity is God's gift, but unity can be costly to us. In our passage from Ephesians 4, Paul tells us to make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. And then in verse 2, he tells us to be completely humble and gentle, be patient, bearing with one another in love. But it seems that some people in church seem to think that bearing with one another means acting like bears, all growly and defending our own territory. But that's just wrong. We're called to bear with each other and bear one another's burdens. The King James Version at this point says, forbearing one another in love. So we're to forbear one another in love, not growling at each other like forbears. Anyway, bear with me. So, friends, we don't create unity, Christian unity, church unity. God has already done that. It's really a question of, do we want that gift that God has created, God offers? And knowing that, then we can practice using God's gift, just like all the other gifts of the Spirit. God has created only one church for us to be in at the end. When Christ returns, he will come for his bride, the church. Please note that he is coming for his one bride, his one church. He is not coming back for a bunch of brides, for a harem, or let alone 34,000 brides. One thing I know, as we come closer to Christ, we come closer to each other. That unity is a great gift of God. And we can only truly experience the gift of unity by the power of the Holy Spirit. So let's pray. Lord, you've given us this great gift of unity. We do need to do more than cherish it and put it in a nice glass case, but, to, but not only to experience the unity you give us in one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God, one body. But Lord, we need to work with it. Use this unity to your glory and be humble with one another, bearing one another's burdens so that we can glorify your name to a world that needs you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. So let's now confess our one faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now the Reverend Susan Salo with the intercessions. Let's pray. So, Lord, our God, first of all, how amazing you are. 
that even though most of us are just listening to this in our own homes, that we are indeed one through your Holy Spirit. We ask, Lord, that you would touch each person with your Holy Spirit and encourage each person in their faith. We ask, Lord, for your blessing now upon all the members of the Anglican Communion around the world. We pray for the continuing caring work of our pastor and staff. We thank you for the ongoing teaching that St. Aidan's is giving in various forms. We lift up to you those who are essential to our everyday lives, especially at this time, and especially we lift up to you those who are criticized and spat upon and insulted merely for following the guidelines meant to keep us safe, and particularly we pray now for retail workers. We pray, Lord God, for your protection for all of us from this terrible disease. We pray for those who are developing an anti-COVID vaccine and those who are working on curing this disease and treating it. We lift up to you, Lord, uh, Leaf Rapids, and uh, we ask that you'd give us creative ways to meet and stay in touch, to share your love and our abundance. We ask your blessing, Lord, upon Pastor Abby, community leaders, and the children. Under missions here, we pray for Alpha. We pray most especially for the infilling of the Holy Spirit, for those who are in the course and those who are leading and praying. Raise up for us intercessors. Move aside anything that would interfere or block these prayers to be effective in our lives. We lift up to you, Lord God, those who are ill and in need. And so here, I would invite you to pray for any in need of God's merciful, loving, and healing touch. Lord, it's just uh, on my heart to pray for families at this time when we're so closed in and things are so stressful. Families are bearing the brunt. We pray, Lord, for your mercy on those whose marriages are failing. We pray for your mercy, Lord, and your help for those who are struggling in abusive situations. We pray most particularly for the children, for the vulnerable ones. We pray for those who are battling addictions and mental illness. We pray for those who are isolated and feeling that desperate lack of human companionship and, and touch. Pray, Lord, that you would send them your help, send them your mercy, defend them from evil, and help them in every way. We thank you, Lord God, for those who work so hard in our personal care homes. We ask that you would give them your help, an extra measure of patience and kindness. We ask your blessing of wisdom and strength for those who are working in hospitals and clinics all over our province, all over our world. And we pray, Lord God, for those who are trying very hard to help those who are housebound or homebound. We give you thanks, Lord God, for those who are recently departed in Christ, and we remember those whose anniversaries of death 
also occur at this time. This is from Psalm 32. Therefore, let all the faithful pray to you while you may be found. Surely the rising of the mighty waters will not reach them. You are my hiding place. You will protect me from trouble and surround me with songs of deliverance. And then the Lord speaks to the psalmist in this psalm. I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you with my loving eye upon you. And so here, Lord God, we pray this most especially for those in authority, especially in our churches, our church life. We pray that you would indeed give them your help and your wise counsel as we emerge from the uh, precautions taken at this, uh, at this time. Many are the woes of the wicked, but the Lord's unfailing love surrounds those who trust in him. Lord God, we indeed put our trust in you. May your kindness and your mercy be our help and our strength forever. In Jesus' name, amen. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy. He welcomes sinners and invites them to his table. Let us confess our sins confident in God's forgiveness. Together, merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart we and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us amend what we are and direct what we shall be so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. So now we have another song. Um, Sarah Jane and Ashley are going to sing The Church's One Foundation. Thank you. 
The Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. And may he turn his face towards you and give you peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and forever. Amen. So a reminder to you all uh, from St. Aidan's to uh, join us at the Zoom Coffee. Uh, you'll need the email that links you to Zoom. Uh, that starts at 11.30. I'll be there. Hope to see you. God bless.